In 2019, Chris Broom had a really bad accident where he fractured his right femur, elbow, ribs and some other bones on the way. He didn't race for the whole of 2019 and there was a big question mark as to whether he'd actually get return in 2020. Since then, he's actually had some okay results and I'm going to go through in this video his top five results since this dramatic crash in 2019 at the Tour at the Dauphiné. So the first race that he really stood out was Tour de Land 2020, where he actually managed to lead the, the group and actually drop people on a climb. It was like a half an hour climb. You can see Lanta, this is Nick from him. He did about 6.2 watts per kilo-ish for 20 minutes, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. No one's 100% sure, but it was a pretty impressive performance. Anyway, this is Tour of Alps 2021. He actually got in a break. Now, this break didn't win, uh, but it was a pretty strong break. You can see like there's some decent riders like Gebra Xavier, uh, there as well, Jeffrey Bouchard, Grosch Hartner, Sanchez, Walter, Pernstein, etc, etc. But what it showed was that he actually was good on the climbs. He bridged across on the climb, which was really impressive. He actually looked a little bit leaner as well, not as heavy as he was before. You can see here pulling some turns. It was actually like Froome Dog. He's getting back to being relevant in races, which was really, really big for the boy because previously he hadn't done much. In the world of 2020, he was okay as well. He was pretty functioning. But at Israel, he'd actually gone backwards, in my opinion, uh, maybe because he was doing more rehab to try and sort his, his life out. But alas, he definitely had got worse. 21 kilometers to go was at the bottom of the main climb. And Froome Dog is still there, which is pretty decent. There's a pretty hard chase from everyone else. And you can see that the break's going to get caught. But nonetheless, Froome does a very good job for the team, getting in the break, meaning they don't have to chase uh, at all. And that the rest of them can basically just sit in and depend um, and basically look after the GC, uh, GC guy. So yeah, this was a pretty impressive performance from Froome Dog. I was su surprised at the time he was in the break. It was really like, wow, Froome's in the break? This is pretty crazy. But what it does show is that he was slowly progressing throughout 2020 and 2021. Um, and, you know, he might have started off not in the best condition in 2021. Uh, that winter, I believe he had done a lot of training at the Red Bull Performance Center to try and uh, take out his imbalances, as I said previously. But I think that meant he probably didn't ride as much as he could have done. Uh, and therefore, he was not in the best condition that he could have been when he turned up to the early season races. But nonetheless, you can see he's getting getting caught now. But Froome is actually functional and can compete in a world tour. It's not a world tour race, but as a world tour rider in a very hard stage race. So this is really good news for the Froome dog. <coughs> Next is Tour of Slovakia. This is towards the end of the year and it's stage five. And you can see here, there's a seven minute gap to the bunch. There's a lead group of 22. And guess who's there? Yeah, you've guessed it right. It's Froome Dog. Froome Dog made the front group yet again. And this was pretty big as well because he actually managed to do a pretty decent job helping out a sprinter as well who actually won the stage. But Froome was there, uh, I think, with Chris Nylans and their sprinter, I'm a, uh, I'm a Einhorn. Um, or that's something like his name. Anyway, he won the sprint. But Froome Dog, you can see here, is with his teammates having a little chat. And he actually does a decent job of keeping it all together and helping him position. If you look at the left-hand side of the screen, you can see Chris Froome's elbows are out next to the yellow jersey, helping Einhorn have a good position near the front of the race. And this, to be honest, must have had something to do with Einhorn winning the race. So in conclusion, Froome Dog looking good. Okay, it's only a 2.1, not the highest level race you'll ever see, but that's Einhorn winning the sprint stage. Again, shows that Froome Dog is getting better and better. And I think it really... So classic Alp Maritime 2022. Froome is actually in the lead group. This was 27k to go. It was a really hilly race. He did about 5.7 watts per kilo for like 40 minutes to be in this group. He's with like Pino, as well as most of the Israel guys, to be fair, like Fuglesang and Mike Wood. So he's looking really, really good. Froome was looking pretty comfortable as well. What didn't really seem too near the back either, which was really good. We now skip to the bottom of the climb. 13k to go. Thibaut Pino decides it's time to get on the front and drill it. And Froome, to be fair to him, I think was trying to help his teammates, but then realized he didn't have the gas. So just, you know, rode his own tempo. But he looked really good on it. Like this was like a really impressive performance because it was fine. Like he must be back to climbing in like a top 20 GC, top 30 GC group. So you can see here Froome sliding off at the back. He's just slipping off slowly. I think he probably could have held on longer if he really wanted to, but I think he wanted to have a good result. You can see number 32 on the left. They're about to zoom in on Thibaut Pino because this is a French race and obviously they love Pino, but who doesn't? But anyway, Chris Froome, we're now going to zoom into in a bit and you'll see him getting dropped. But to be honest, like he doesn't, Jeffrey Bouchard goes around him um, and gets back on and Froome, to be fair, like doesn't really look like he's getting dropped. I think he's just riding his own tempo and was like, just maybe it was more of a training thing and just wanted to see what he could do. But anyway, it was really impressive because it was like obviously a performance which you hadn't seen coming. There was no necessary indicators. Obviously, Tour of Alps, he looked good, but this came after that. But it wasn't like one of those things where you're like, oh, yeah, it's definitely going to happen. And I think it gave a lot of confidence to him 
I think, for the Tour de France and in showing that actually he can climb at a very high level. And now we're going to go into his best performance, which was at the Tour. Chris Froome attacking up the Galibier, trying to get across. We then go over to some absolute nutty descending by Pidcock, who catches Froome in no man's land in between the break uh, and the bunch. But Pidcock sort of brings him up and says, right, we're going we're gonna to get to the front group. And that's what Pidcock does to Froome. Uh, you can see some outrageous cornering. Froome, to be fair, actually does holds his wheel decently well uh, in, in the Galibier, in the Telegraph, different story for sure. But nonetheless, Chris Froome was looking good in this stage. You can see here, we're going to go over an outrageous overtake. Uh, it really was some stunning descending by Pidcock. But also, you can see Froome getting on. Froome's in front of here. Pidcock late breaks him here. And to be fair, this is an outrageous move yet again. I mean, it really is. If he comes on the right-hand side, it's a right-hand hairpin, comes up his inside, and then just late breaks. And it's just like, cheerio Froome, which was pretty mad. But anyway, Chris Froome is like, right, time to hold the wheel. And Froome, I guess, knows that this is the way he's going to get across the break. He must have had good legs, to be honest. It finished up outdoors, so it was something that he's probably really wants to win. He's actually never won an Alpe d'Huez, um, despite getting some good results there. Well, actually, to be fair, his results there have been pretty average, haven't they? He was getting dropped in 2013. 2015, he got dropped, but wasn't as bad. Um, and then, like, 2018, when G1, he, to be fair, well, actually was in the same group as G, just didn't win the stage. But anyway, Froome's now going, bridging across to the break with Pidcock, looking really, really strong. You can see this is the climb up the Telegraph, they're having a little chat, probably like we're going to whack it. And here's actually the main bunch. And what you're going to see is Froome and Pidcock launching it on the descent. And they actually catch Nielsen Paulus and then go straight by. There's uh, Pidcock, but in behind you actually see Froome also going across as well, which goes to show Froome's descending has improved quite a lot despite his big crash. This is on Abduez and actually Pidcock attacked really early. Chris Froome got dropped quite early about here and that was it. But he managed to get third on this stage, which was really impressive. And yeah, that's Chris Broom's top five performances since his crash in 2019.